<clears throat> uh, wood chip combustion, fascinating possibility. What are we going to do with our, our failing uh, tree, or shall we say, uh, woodlot industries up and down the Ottawa Valley? They have no markets because um, mills have gone out of business, or there have been trade barriers to export of their product. They're now retooling, and we may be seeing within the next 20 years a huge amount of, of, of wood chip and pellets grown outside of our cities, transported to the cities where people combust them in their own homes, which is a fascinating idea. I've seen this technology in homes in Europe. Again, it's just a lateral transfer of what's there now, where it's a, a for instance, it's a, it burns a pellet completely on an automated basis. You, you, you pile the pellets into a, uh, a bin with an auger and you walk away. The, the, the furnace looks after the combustion and, and, and completely does it in an automatic way. So these concepts are going to be adopted in our environment over the next 20 years. Things that will look different. Didn't have any, any fancy pictures. Paul actually brought some pictures for uh, with respect to bus stops, and I thought that was fantastic. But I'll just itemize some of the things that are going to be brought to those. So bus stops are all going to be wind and solar in various combinations for illumination and heating. Uh, light poles, wind and solar in various combinations for illuminating and heat or illuminating mostly, but also light poles and bus stops are going to be nodes and networks too. They're going to be um, RF nodes. In other words, they'll be able to talk to you. Uh, video cameras, uh, internet, uh, Wi-Fi nodes will be in contact with these elements as we walk down the street uh, and they'll be powered. Flat top roofs, flat rooftops, wind and solar, slope rooftops, solar as they are now, civic buildings, all of the above. District heating, that's where we, we band buildings together, linking them underground with, with piping systems and we have a centralized heating or cooling system. Um, there is such a thing already in Ottawa. It's all the government buildings. There's a central plant in existence. Uh, they shall or will probably think about expanding their network to include other buildings, even the reach could get as far as where we are here. We're going to see these ideas coming forward over the next 20 years. And again, it's not new. It's in, in the European context, district heating is what they've been doing for 50 years. Transportation. Transportation is going to look different. And, and we're going to talk about not just function, but look different. Uh, we're going to see electric cars and trucks, uh, overnight car battery charging stations. Where you go to work, you plug your car in, th they'll They'll meter that and you'll pay them for whatever consumption of energy it takes place during the day. Solar panels on transport trucks, sounds like a bit weird, but you can have 10 kilowatts of power on a transport truck as it goes down a highway on both the sides and the roof. And, and people are going to start thinking about what can I do with that power as opposed to why am I running an air conditioner on my transport truck if, I, if I'm, if I'm um, shipping refrigerated goods I'm just consuming hydrocarbons to run the air conditioner. Why not have solar panels? At a service station, you won't be buying liquid energy anymore. You're going to be buying electrons. Or you'll be, well, not just buying them, maybe you'll, you'll be borrowing them in a sense that you'll be picking up a battery, a fresh battery, and dropping off the old battery. Um, another approach is going to be fast charges where you sit for about 8 to 10 minutes waiting for your battery systems to power up. That's being thought of as well. Um, Mass transit, hybrids are coming. We've got them already, but we're talking in 20 years, everything's going to be hybrids. Everything's going to be uh, a renewable, of s have some kind of renewable energy system built into it. Driverless vehicles, uh, they're, they're feasible today. The, the uh, technology is proven. It's a question of do, are we ready as a society to embrace the changes? And we're going to have that discussion in the next 20 years, and it'll, it'll probably happen. We'll get through it. We'll, we'll be completely uh, comfortable with robotized vehicles going up and down our streets. Uh, it, it gets green because the fact that you automate means you rationalize the way the transportation works. In other words, you, you space vehicles better. You, you have better acceleration, better stopping. In other words, you economize how the machinery operates. Uh, personal choice, it doesn't always lead to the best economies in the way that the vehicles operate. Um, some ideas as to what's going to change from a personal point of view. We, we talked about metered charging. Tow trucks will deliver batteries in case 
in case it, uh, y y your batteries go flat. So people will be stranded to degree sometimes, but you just call a tow truck and they show up with a new battery. So that'll be a bit different. When you're driving around in your, your battery or your uh, hybrid vehicle, your computer system will tell you when you're due for a replacement. And it's actually going to call forward to a service station and say, what have you got? And it'll shop for you because it'll be a competitive market. Your batteries will be, be priced competitively. So your iPod will do the shopping for you and tell you that it's arranged a battery in the next eight or ten minutes. And when you get to the service station, they'll be ready for you because they know you're coming because you're tracked with GPS. So when you roll in, they'll have your battery ready for you. You'll be replaced in five to eight minutes and out you go. That's, that's the type of uh, automation that we're going to be seeing. We'll be totally comfortable with these concepts as consumers, uh, just as we were or are with, with grabbing a pump and, pu and, and pumping gas into our car. It's just a different process, but it's going to happen. Here's a five-year vision, <coughs> not quite as, as aggressive. Uh, but we think in Ottawa Centre, 2,500 homes could have rooftop solar. And that's, that doesn't seem too aggressive. Right now, there are, I don't know whether there's any in Ottawa Centre right now. My house was one of the few one powered ones till I sold it. Um, we think every municipal park will have renewables to a degree. Could be, could be the energy ball, could be solar. It, it, it will exist in, uh, in parks. Um, there's architectural elements to these things as, as well. They, you can almost celebrate them from an... Uh, it's not necessarily how efficient are they from a renewable energy generation point of view, but what do they tell us about our, our society? What do they tell people about what we're trying to accomplish? So in parks, you sometimes make visual statements about what you want to happen. And, and so I think we will see in many parks, we're going to see the choice of putting in devices such as uh, solar or wind for that reason. Hospitals, schools, the mush institutions, they have a, um, an incentive to invest in this equipment because it will actually give them a sustainable cash flow. It, it does attract uh, a firmer bottom line, so they will want to do it too. And w we're going to see that not just within, five, within a year or two. Another thing we're going to see is start to see changes in the way transport is, is made available. Um, there's no question that transport has to become more effective. And I'm talking about public transport. It has to be more effective. It has to start to incent people to think about where they want to go and why and how far uh, in a sustainable way. Right now we have a, a, a fairly democratic system where you pay a dollar or three dollars, whatever, and you get to travel the whole network. We may want to change that so there are um, price signals for how far you go because we don't want you to go too far. We want you to stay bounded within certain areas of the community. And that may happen with this idea of free ridership within certain bounds and then a paid-for ridership beyond that. And that exists in cities around North America now. I think Dallas has got that uh, right now. Calgary, yeah. Uh, public reporting on travel commutes. The idea that, that we as an employer are responsible to our community to make sure that we don't perpetuate this sense of I'm going to let everybody drive hither and yon to their home. The idea of satellite communities uh, where you've got, well, right now a 45-minute travel time between the eastern side of Orleans and the western side of Canada. I mean, is that the type of thing that we, is that the kind of city that you want to have where people are making that commute every day just because their employer says, this is where I've decided to have my office. Um, we may have a discussion with employers and say, you need to do something about changing that so that you try to centralize or concentrate where people live so they're, they're, they're taking different tra travel decisions or riding or walking or making, if they need to, a, a short haul transit ride to get to where their place of employment. And lastly, if they need to take a long or a, um, a ride in an automobile, that's allowed, but at a, at a price. Uh, to get to that point where we have uh, employers thinking that one through and activating those ideas within their organizations, that may take some kind of market impulse or, or regulation, and one of the ideas would be public reporting. Just a thought. Goals. This is where we talk about how we're going to get there. We have to assign our leaders with some ideas for what they need to do and concentrate on in the next few years. 
So these are some thoughts that, that uh, Chantal, Paul, and I came up with in our discussions earlier this week. No question, keep the Green, Green Energy Act intact. Don't change it, don't fiddle with it. It's got to stay because if you want that investment and create green economics and, and green machinery within the bounds of our province, you have to give the investors a sense of longitude in the investment. So don't fiddle, it's got to stay. Encourage energy entrepreneurs at the local and the community level. It's happening now. So as a, an impulse to our leaders, we have to tell them it's happening now. Don't change it. Keep it going. Enable restructuring in transport. Now that we've done electrical energy and thermal is being worked on as well, we have, we've got to tackle transport. 